Greetings to you, my friends around the world. I welcome you to another edition of Mentoring Masterclass with me, Bola Adewara. Today, we want to look at pastoring on the social media, the do's and the don'ts. Pastoring on the social media, the do's and the don'ts. And uh, next week, we will be looking at 10 reasons why pastors should be on social media. 10 reasons why pastors should be on social media. But today, we're going to look at pastoring on social media, the do's and the don'ts. First of all, let us look at the internet and the social media. When the internet uh, came and new to Nigeria, so many pastors saw it as a house of sin. The social media which came much later was seen as a fad that will soon fade away as quickly as it came into limelight. So far, these expectations have not come to pass. Rather, the internet and the social media are waxing stronger. Let it be said that the internet is the biggest thing that happened to the world. And the social media is not going away anytime soon. Facebook started as a college thing before it metamorphosed into a worldwide platform absorbing moms, dads, children, even grannies. Before Facebook came, there was something we called the Yahoo chat. There was also another one we called the Friend Star. I don't know if many of you understand this then. Now, what do we mean by social media? Social media are the interactive technologies that were created uh, for uh, sharing or exchange of uh, information, ideas, careers, interest, and other forms of expression via virtual community or uh, networks. There are about nine types of social media. Let's look at it. The very first one, social network. A social networking site is a social media site that allows you to connect with people, friends, families, and even brands. Here, you can share thoughts, upload photos and videos, and uh, participate in groups of uh, interest. You know, such example of social networks are uh, Facebook, Twitter, Instagram, and so on. The second type of social media is, uh, we call it a microblogging. These are sites that allow the users to submit their short written entries, which can include links to um, products and services. Examples of them also is uh, uh, Twitter and uh, Facebook. is also an example of uh, microblogging. The third one is uh, bookmarking site. Bookmarking site allow users to save and organize links to any number of online resources and websites. Popular example of bookmarking sites are StumbleUpon, Pinterest, Flipboard, Digs. These things are not. Uh, these sites are not uh, very popular in this part of the world. The fourth type of social media is called uh, social news. A social news site allows its users to post news links and other items to external articles. Users then proceed to vote on said items and the items with the highest number of votes are most prominently displayed. Example of this uh, social news is uh, Reddit. Uh, Dig is another example. Let's look at the fifth type of social media. We call it a uh, media sharing. Media sharing websites allow users to share different types of media um, with two main ones being image sharing and video posting sites. Examples of this uh, media sharing is uh, Facebook, Vimeo, and uh, Dix2 is another example of it. The sixth one is uh, blog, comments, and forums. An online forum is a site that lets users engage in conversations in conversations uh, by posting and um, responding to community messages. The comments are usually centered on uh, specific subjects, 
you know, specific uh, subjects of uh, the attached blog. Example of this is a blogger, and then we have one in Nigeria we call it Naira Land. I'm sure many of you know Naira Land. The seventh one is called the social review site. In some parts of the world, where you are planning to, when you are planning to buy a new product or trying out a new restaurant, the first head to the internet for reviews. This is a kind of social media too. Example of this thing is called a TripAdvisor, Yelp, Foursquare. You know, these are type of social media. Number eight is uh, what we call the community blogs. Uh, when you want to share that one message, and really not everyone on the internet wants to invest in running and maintaining a blog. Example of this is a Tumblr uh, and some other ones like that. Uh, the last one is what we call the sharing economy networks. These sharing economy networks bring people who have got something they want to share together uh, with people who need it. If you want something, they bring you together to people who uh, need it, you know, things like that. Example of this is the air, 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 air knob. We have the Pantheon also, and we have the Kickstarter. These are kind of social media that they are not very common or proper, uh, well used in this part of the world. You see, of these nine social media, in this part of the world, we focus on the first two or on the first, uh, the first and the second type, the social networks and the microblogging. Amongst them, Facebook is easily the largest social networking site in the world and one of the most widely used, having about 2.85 billion users around the world. Uh, around, the, I mean, all over the world, we have about 7.9 billion people. Facebook alone has about 2.85 billion people. YouTube has about 1.9 billion users. WhatsApp has about 1.5 billion users. Uh, Facebook Messenger has about 1.3 billion users. Instagram, Instagram has about 1 billion users. Twitter, that was banned in this part of Nigeria, I mean in this part of the world, Nigeria, by the powers that be, you understand what I mean? has about just about 340 million users. Without doubt, majority of your church members and people you need to preach to are on the social networks and microblogging. I will henceforth refer to these two as the social media. The Facebook, the WhatsApp, the YouTube. I will refer to them as the social media henceforth. The social media is a field, is a mission field. Pastors, don't ignore it. It is within this context we source the pertinence of guidelines that pastors and church leaders should consider it as they plan their social media strategy and diary. Now, what are the do's and don'ts of pastors on the social media? What are the do's and don'ts of pastors on the social media? Number one, post encouraging content. I hope many pastors are watching me. Post encouraging content. In the early days of the internet, one of the reasons pastors avoid it was the volume of negative content on the social media. The volume of the negative content, you know, those days, it was more of pornography, abuse, bullying, sex, negativities, etc. Sadly, this won't stop anytime soon. Despite the fact that owners of the site and browsers are doing well to keep the platform clean by protecting people's copyright, removing uh, sexually explicit content, etc. But pastors must not just throw their hands up in, resign, in, in resignation. The best response for evil is for good men to do something about it. The evil on social media can only be destroyed by the light of the gospel. Pastors have the opportunity and responsibility to post encouraging gospel content on the digital space. Number two, 
one of the do's of the show media create your own content don't forget to create your own content there are so many contents online as a pastor of a church don't be caught stealing or using the content that are not yours if you have to use content be gracious enough to credit the owner that is the best practice recently in nigeria there were stories here and there over some pastors taking each other to court over intellectual property issue another pastor told me of how he gave his manuscript to a man he regarded as a friend to go through for him and the man went through i the man went ahead of this man to copy paragraphs and pages added this to his own work and hit the press of course this pastor kept quiet so as not to drag the name of christ in the mud it is necessary for pastors to create their own media department where images stories and so on and so forth could be churned out in the name of the church it will not be right to hear churches being taken to court on regular basis on account of theft of intellectual property pastors create your own content number three set time for the social media in churches so many preachers often speak against christian who spend unending time on the social media without having time or commensurate time for their quiet time at home some pastors also avoid it because they feel it is taking too much of their time truly the social media could be addictive but it should not be ignored the best pastor can do on this setting time for is a certain time for everything church members should be told that the first thing in the morning is prayers handing the day unto god not whatsapp not facebook not twitter pastors should not think that they can wage war on the social media it can't work it cannot work number four teach your cameraman what to do when broadcasting churches should not be at liberty to use the pictures of their church members without warning them beforehand don't think that you are free or you are at liberty to just focus on your church members or anybody like that without warning them let them know that we are recording and we might record your face we might put you on a, on a, on on the social media we have seen pictures of people being delivered doing, when, when they do a kind of a, um, what do you call it a, um, deliverance and people will be rolling you will see their underwears here and there no this is not right pastors this is not right when you are doing deliverance for people find a way of covering their nakedness or their privacies you can't just say because they are in the church you will then show they are on these and things that will be on the name of deliverance no it is wrong not every church member would like to see their pictures all over the social media the media department should know how to focus on members on close and long shots the only person you should give close shots at all time is the preacher and not the members also the covid restriction have brought more pastors to the social media where they broadcast on ending church services everywhere is looking so rowdy and unorganized choir members are untidy deliverance section looking funny where you will find the person being delivered hitting pastor beating pastor back no this is not right at the end of the day we are giving more negative information about our churches to the public some people will see some church environment and swear never to attend churches again this is not good for our churches people who would watch a church service from beginning to the end are mainly your church members visitors will not like to waste their data therefore preachers should focus on broadcasting few minutes of preaching 
either in their offices or on the altars with good environment that will captivate people who are watching. The social media ethics is now being abused by our churches and pastors who think they can fling just anything at people all because they have the data to burn. This attitude is not good for the 21st century church. Number five, don't be controversial. If you will pastor on the internet, please don't be a controversial pastor. Pastors, especially those leading churches, should not be attacking people or institution online. Wage no political battle against no one or condemning political parties or the fate of others. You can condemn evil done by parties, by politicians or by leaders, but be sensitive enough not to be seen as tilting to one party. In your church, uh, members there are, in your church there are members of different political parties. The same thing on matters of faith. You can't win people by condemning their faith. Winning should start with showing love to people. All you can do is to preach the gospel, living convincing and convicting people to the Holy Ghost. Pastors, especially church members, should be sensitive to the totem of the internet evangelism. When you want to preach to Muslims, you don't start by condemning them, by condemning their faith. Oh, all Muslims will go to prison, all Muslims will go to hell. Muhammad is this, Muhammad is that. That is not how to do evangelism. Don't start condemning people's faith. Show love to them. Preach the gospel to them. Let God do the convincing and the convicting. Number six, consider buying Facebook advertisement. It has not done on so many pastors to consider the relevance of Facebook, Facebook advertisement to reach their target audience. As much as you set aside budget for flyers, for posters, for radio and television jingle for your program, Facebook advertisement is also pertinent. So many of us think just posting pictures or flyers on our timeline will do a great job. No. Facebook is a business and the guy has a way of limiting those who see your posts and flyers. Of the over 5,000 people you are allowed to have on your timeline, less than 500, maximum 1,000 can see your post at a time. The only time you can guarantee maximum coverage of that 5,000 people is when you pay Facebook for advertisement. Please, when you are setting aside budget for flyer and stuff, don't forget also to set aside budget for Facebook advertisement. Number seven, pride and buying followers. An unfolding scenario on the social media is pride. In their efforts to look superior and more influential than others, they engage some third-party services to provide uh, some service, a service provider to populate their follow their followers number. Unknown to this pastor, this figure remains stationary henceforth, giving them up as having played some hacky panky. I know a so pastor who told me at a state that do I know people who can help him populate his Twitter account because he just got on Twitter and he doesn't want people to see that he has just about 20 30 followers after one year then he called me do but like, how can I get someone who will help us populate our Twitter uh, followers to about 20,000 50,000 100,000 this thing they use there they are not real human beings we need to be very careful about it Pastors should not engage in buying followers or engaging church members to go on sending friend requests indiscriminately. Number eight, don't take online friendship for real. Pastors, don't take online friendship for real. Pastors should not think the number of followers on the social media translates to real friendship and how they are actually loved. 
You think you have about 5,000 followers on your Facebook and you think all the 5,000 people are your friends? No. There are so many agents of evil online. Women who want to derail you by offering themselves. Men who want to exploit your generosity. People who want to quote you wrongly to achieve a purpose. People who hate you for no just reason and want to abuse you. Pastors must be careful how they interact online. Number nine, a personal touch. However, when a genuine case is established online, like loss of spouse, child, accident, a Facebook comment or like is not sufficient for a pastor. Pastor, take note of this. Just, you heard that maybe your church member had an accident and you now come on Facebook to say, sorry on your accident. No, that is not enough. In fact, pastors should not communicate with people who have such issues on the social media. Call them if you cannot go to their homes. A Facebook comment or like is not sufficient for a pastor. It doesn't hold the same weight as personal phone call, a text message, or even a visit. A friend who lost the spouse requires more attention in his moment of grief. If the pastor could not go there, he could send some of his associated pastors to go there and pray with the person. Facebook is a relational tool, but it will never replace good, old-fashioned, authentic community. Number 10, seek support. The duties of a pastor are more important than socializing on social media. Pastors should not be saddled with the responsibility of maintaining the social media or website of the church. It is necessary to find a well-trained volunteer or worker to carry out an operative social media strategy while adhering to the basic guidelines set by the church. I believe you have gained something today and I hope that uh, you will take heed to some of these do's and don't of pastoring on the social media. Next week, I will be speaking on 10 reasons why pastors should be on social media. 10 reasons why pastors should be on social media. That will be Saturday or Sunday next week. You will see the advertisement all over the place. If you have any question to ask, you can send it to me on uh, this very platform you are watching. And uh, I want you to like what we are doing on YouTube. Go on YouTube and like it. Go on uh, Mentoring Masterclass. Search for Mentoring Masterclass and you will see all the past editions of our mentoring lectures. I welcome you and I, be, I bless you in the name of the living God. How was Sunday today? Until I come your way next week, the Lord be with you. Thank you. God bless you.